Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy, and I am Jonathan, and today I will be taking you through a tutorial on how to create a Sudoku solver. Uh, at least we will get started on this project, it's uh, more of an intermediate project, uh, in my opinion. As for requirements and such, um, as far as uh, programming knowledge, um, you don't have to be uh, a genius at programming or have spent uh, hours uh, practicing for this. Uh, my personal background, um, although this is uh, uh, the fifth uh, or sixth language that I have uh, uh, tried, um, I did know uh, uh, Excel and uh, Visual Basic. Uh, quite well, and uh, that is the program I actually made my very first Sudoku solver, which actually um, thought like a human does as far as logic instead of a guess and check method, which we will be using for this tutorial. And my other background is uh, GML, that would be the Game Maker language, um, which I also know uh, uh, fairly well. And if you know either of those, or if you know C, 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 -sharp, um, or uh, any uh, other language, really, you should be able to uh, pick up fairly well. You just need the basics, uh, such as uh, um, variables and uh, so on, just some basics on how programming uh, kind of works in a general sense, even if it's quite different, such as uh, uh, Game Maker language. Um, with its uh, as a scripting language or an icon based, um, but um, we will get started. But first, I want just to show you some uh, uh, statistics. It's always good when you start a, a program like this, especially since we will be using a guess and check method to know how many possibilities are there, because the computer thinks much uh, quicker. It can handle brute force. Uh, solving methods, and that's why we will be using a guess and check method, although a human would not do it because of the time it would take. It's much faster to use logic, but a guess and check can overcome uh, advanced logic things that humans uh, would have a much harder time at. So for a computer, I will uh, use guess and check, although it's not always ideal, but that's what we'll be doing for uh, simplicity's sake. Um, just so you know how many options there are, I I went to this, found this website, I googled it, and uh, you're free to go there, um, and I give credit for the stats here, but he claimed, this uh, guy, uh, he's in the Department of Pure Mathematics, I uh, just took him as a word, I didn't really read the document, but he says there are that many, uh, this massive number of many uh, possible, or uh different Sudokus. Like if you could combine any uh, solved Sudoku, figure out how many different uh, solved Sudokus there could be, um, that's the number you would get, and that's six. Um, and then there's, I believe this is a 22-digit number. Um, so that's uh, unfathomable. Fathomable. So, uh, it's a big number, but we will hopefully be uh, using some methods to help speed things along and using uh, a lot of brute force and computational power. Uh, Java is not the fastest program, I will say, um, but uh, or language, I should say, but it is easier, in my opinion, that's just a personal opinion, than uh, C or C++. And so that is what we will be using. Uh, if you are looking for the ultimate speed and to win competitions, Java is probably not the uh, ideal language for you. But if you're wanting to learn how to program in a real uh, uh, standard programming language, or if you're just wanting to learn the logic of just an idea of how you would go about programming this, this should be a much easier tutorial than if it were in C or C++. So the beginning thing you would have to do is open the NetBeans uh, IDE that you have hopefully installed. 
and it should be capable of Java. Once you have opened it, you want to click on this uh, upper left hand uh, item. It'll be the orange one. Um, you're going to create a new project. Click on that and you want to make sure the top option, just plain Java. Java category is selected and then select Java application. Um, and click next. This will just set up a, a basic Java thing and we'll name the project Sudoku. And our main class can be, uh, we'll name it Sudoku as well. They don't need to be the same, but uh, that's how we'll do it. And then click finish. Now what's going to change here is you'll see Sudoku, a tab opens up. This might be your only tab. I have other things open. And also on the left, you have Sudoku and a whole hierarchy of things. Um, but we'll focus just on the Sudoku thing. It, it begins by putting in all these comment things. This is how Java comments. When you want multiple lines of code, what you do is a slash star, and then you can type and type in as many lines and it adds a, automatically adds a slash star at the end. That means everything between those, in, those two uh, end pieces here and here are all comments. It basically comments uh, the uh, Java will not read. It will be ignored when it's compiled and it's just for your reference and to make sure that you can keep tabs on what you've written. And if you want a single line, ta uh, line uh, comment, you would do a double slash and type. And then the next line is not uh, comment. But we'll just delete all the comments. Just clean this all up. Uh, delete all this. Just get it very basic. Just delete to the end of the text so you keep the tab format. So this is the very start. You start off with a class. Um, and then there are different uh, uh, things that can go inside. There's uh, This is the the main um, event and this is what uh, the program will start off with and basically uh, if I were to use um, this would be uh, technically incorrect but um, for all uh, intents and purposes um, this main one is the very in a game maker it would be um, the first object that was run and you can create multiple objects by making another one of these right below, such as uh, public static void um, demo, like this. And so this would be, uh, you could think of it as your first object and your second object. It's more of a procedure, technically. And so this procedure is run first, the main one, whatever's called main. And then this main one could call the demo procedure, such as uh, demo. And now the main one, when Java starts, it calls, it reads this main one. And it'll then run demo. Um, and that's kind of how you can bounce between chunks of organized code. And um, I'll just give you an idea of what all these symbols mean. Demo, you could have any word here. This one has to be main. That's what it starts with. If there's no main, it won't. Uh, I don't know what happens, but you don't want that. But you provide a name that's uh, appropriate for the contents of what it's trying to do. If you just name them A1, A2, A3, and it has to do about... Uh, something unrelated to any A numbering system, then you'll never remember what A1 stood for. So just name it, whatever. And I'll show you just how to print a basic line of code. Um, the most basic you would do is system, and make sure uh, you use a capital S. Uh, it is case sensitive. System dot out dot uh, print line um, 
and then you need a colon at the end. Every line requires a colon to signify the end of that line, and then it'll go to the next line. If you don't do a colon, um, I could actually hit enter here for, uh, let's see, enter right there, and it'll just keep reading this as if it was on one line, um, because it hasn't encountered that colon yet. So uh, within these uh, brackets, we'll put a quote, and then say, hello, exclamation marks. Um, if I were to run this now by hitting the green button here, you would see in the output below, hello. So system.out.println um, gives an output, and it prints this line, hello. So that's a, a very basic uh, thing with uh, Java. Um, another quick thing before we get started is uh, variables. So if I add a line here, um, uh, you would start off with, uh, let's, let's do this incorrectly, we'll start off with a name. Let's say we have a variable x equals 1, and we add a colon at the end, semicolon, whatever it is. It underlines the x. Um, and this is incorrect. It needs to know what type of variable it is because x is an unknown. And in this case, I will pick int x. And int stands for integer. If you pick integer, you're basically picking a whole number. That's a, a negative 10, a 0, a 5, uh, a million. Um, it is not a million point five, or it's not a third. Um, if you're going to do numbers with decimal places, do double, and that indicates to Java the type of number that x will be. And if you're going to do words or a character, um, I believe it would be char, and then to write a character, this is a single letter, not a, um, a word or a string of words, but a single letter, and you would do a single quote. Um, and, and put in one letter. Don't put in multiple uh, letters. You'll see it underlines it with red. Just one letter. That's a character. And the last type is actually uh, an object, technically. But uh, we'll just think of it in the same light of it as integer and the rest for now, even though that's incorrect. And that would be string. And string, the S is capitalized. And now you can put in all sorts of stuff inside there, and all of a sudden x becomes that. So when you call x, it thinks of that. So if we go back to our integer value of x as 3, or as 4, sorry, and then if we, uh, let's just copy this system out print line. Um, don't feel you have to copy this, uh, just watch this for a little bit. Um, and then if we did, um, 4 times 16 inside, you will see that it'll print in uh, 64, hello, because it set, uh, it printed, set x as 4, then it printed 4 times 16, and then it called demo, which printed hello. Thus, 64 hello is the output. However, if we change this 4 with an x, x is 4, and when we run it, we're going to get the same result. Um, when you do ma uh, multiplication addition, it, it follows the same rules as it, uh, normal math does. Uh, uh, multiplication and division go first um, by default, and then it does the addition. Uh, there's only one difference, and that is that the plus sign um, can be used for, see if I did x plus 16, you're going to get 20, which is 4 plus 16 is 20, and that's correct. Now, if I, instead of x, if I wrote um, in quotes, words, words equal, and then plus 16, the plus 16 adds, uh, is written after the words. And then, instead of going um, from 
Uh, and then, it, so it first prints out words. It goes from left to right in this case. Uh, words, and then the plus is not an addition as far as numbers because it started off with words. It just writes 16 afterwards. And therefore, if I do plus x plus 16, what it does, since it starts from left to right, you would think it would say words tw equals 20, but it doesn't. It starts from left to right, so you have to think like the engine does. It'll do words, then it'll write a 4. It'll at, put a 4 at the end, and then it'll put a 16 at the end. So you get four words equals 416, not words equals 20. If you want words equals 20, you have to add brackets there. And that will provide you with words equals 20. This might be a little bit of an over, uh, um, a little bit too abrupt at first. So uh, we will slowly be easing into this, and you can always replay this as we go. And things will just continue gradually get more complicated, but it's definitely faster paced at the beginning. And later on, it's more uh, thinking about how to do how to. Uh, grasp the situation rather than how to do the programming. So I'm just going to uh, delete all this uh, for now. Um, and so this is where you should be with just a basic program. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create an array. And uh, I won't go into too many details about an array, but you can think of it uh, as a two-dimensional uh, list of numbers, like uh, a one-dimensional might be, you could think of it as one comma two comma three comma seven comma uh, eleven comma negative one. That would uh, sort of be a list, and then uh, an array would be uh, more like a grid: row one, column two. So it takes two numbers to get pinpoint your location. And since we're doing a Sudoku, uh, the most easy way, especially visually and uh, the way that makes sense, is to create an array. And the array will consist of integers, right? Uh, numbers from 1 to 9. Um, and uh, there's always, you have to remember that in Sudoku, and hopefully this is a prerequisite, I guess, for this tutorial to know Sudoku, if you don't... Uh, Please figure uh, out how to do it um, from uh, some tutorial. I'm sure there's lots of them on the net, uh, better than any I could produce. But uh, the, there are numbers 1 to 9 arranged in squares, and each column and row has numbers 1 to 9. And then there are 9 squares of 9 uh, arranged in the Sudoku, which also must contain numbers 1 to 9. And... Um, so uh, there are blank numbers. In a beginning Sudoku, there are, there are squares that are blank. So what integer, what number will represent a blank square if this array will be filled with integers? And uh, the obvious answer that I come up with is zero. Zero is like null. It's uh, nothing. And so we will consider that a blank spot. So what we will do is write integer because we're going to be declaring an integer array. And we will name this grid, or this array, I guess, um, user, user grid. And I usually, when I combine two words, you can't put a space in names, um, use, as in user space grid. It's got to be one word. And so the way I, when I put user and grid together, I capitalize every sec the second and third and fourth word and so on. Not the first, not the U, but the G for grid. And the way you do an array is you put in square brackets. This would mean a list more. It's still an array, but more of a one-dimensional array. And if you, if you add a second one, that means it's now like a grid. So if this one was uh, three and two, that might be uh, row 3, column 2, something like that. And now we have to uh, write in this uh, fancy code here, just write in new int. So what we're doing is 
describing the uh, user grid as an integer that is an array. And hit enter, even though we haven't finished, and I'll put curly bracket, curly bracket. And I'll just indent that. Um, and this is how we're going to represent uh, the array. There are many ways to represent an array, but this I find to be the most visually appealing uh, method, although the most, uh, perhaps, line-consuming. So we'll add another curly brackets inside, make sure they're curly, and we'll put in 0, 0, 0, and we'll do this 9 times. How many do I have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Good. Now I hit enter. And put in another one. And I will just, uh, actually I'll just copy this line. And paste it here. Like that. Um, with a comma at the end. And then I will put, as you see it's underlined in red, if you put the semicolon at the end, that solves that. And then paste this a couple more times. My uh, indenting's all gone, seems like. Uh, that's because I need a comma, perhaps, at the end. There we go. So, how many lines do I have? If you select it and hit tab, it won't replace it with a tab. It will actually indent everything. If you do shift tab, it goes back. That's how you navigate that. So we need, since we have nine zeros, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we want nine rows, because it's a nine by nine grid. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like so. Add a comma there. All right. And let's see. Um, now I have a lovely error that I have to think. Um, there we go. Um, so that should be what you're looking at. And this is a blank grid. This is a Sudoku that nothing is solved in. And of course, we're not putting in these nice, distinct lines that everybody would hope for. Um, but it will hopefully uh, be possible to continue. And we will add a comment to this by doing a double slash and saying uh, horizontal is in the first bracket and vertical is in the second bracket so that we can keep track. So when I say user grid um, 3, 3, it goes to horizontally one, uh, it starts at zero. Zero, one, two, three across, and then zero, one, two, three down. And it always starts at the top left corner. That's another thing I should mention. This spot is zero, zero, and therefore this spot is eight, eight, not nine, nine, because nine assumes you start at one, one. Um, hopefully that made sense. That sounded confusing when I heard myself say that. And the next thing we will write is um, we will make uh, another grid. And just run with me uh, on the logic behind this. Uh, normally, when you solve a Sudoku, you have one grid and you start solving it. Just You start writing on this grid, and it makes sense. You just have one grid and a pencil kind of thing um, and an eraser if you're like me. 
but with uh, programming, we have a grid that the user types in, okay, this number 00, zero is a 3. We know these specific numbers and the rest we don't know. And we want to leave that intact so that they can edit this and once it solves, it doesn't fill in all their spots and they don't know what they had typed in. So we need a grid. This is the grid the user types in. We will create another grid that the computer uh, works on. And we will create a third grid. So the first grid is just the unsolved Sudoku that the user provides. The second grid is the grid where it tries out numbers and erases as a guess and check. Oh, let's check if this number is a 1 in this square. Oh, no, that didn't work. Let's try it with a 5. That works. Let's go on to the next square and so on. And the third grid that we will make is going to consist of all the possibilities. So instead of this one being a blank, it will be, it'll have numbers 1 through 9 inside of it. And uh, that will become apparently uh, useful as you'll see later on, especially when we're trying to improve the speed of this uh, program in various situations. Um, but basically the guess, uh, the guess and check will refer to that third uh, grid containing numbers 1 to 9 and select the next number that appears number greater than uh, the one it's currently guessed. So if it guessed 5 and it didn't work, it goes and looks at all the possibilities and sees, oh, 6 is the next possibility, I'll jump it to 6, and so on. Anyway, uh, that'll all begin to make more sense later, but here we have already created our grid and um, before we create, uh, well, let's create uh, these other grids. So we'll write in integer int, and this one we'll call just grid. We'll just call it grid because we'll be using it a lot. And the two brackets, you may as well just copy the equals new int. Uh, it's all the same as the last one. There's a lot of repetition in programming. And the only difference in this case, let's add a semicolon, is that we'll put 9 and 9. Instead of calling this big thing which puts zeros, which is very helpful because if I wanted the user to pick this as a 1, I can visually see where that went. But if I say 99, it will essentially actually generate this. It'll generate with default as 0, and it'll create 9 by 9 grid. So that's a very concise, easy way. And as a comment, we will uh, describe this grid as the grid that the program experiment on. Um, so it will try things and undo them and, and uh, experiment as it guesses and checks its way through the Sudoku. And uh, then we will create another one which we will um, make a string. It won't be numbers actually. Um, it'll make sense later. String. And we'll call this one uh, P grid and copy this 99 nine thing and oh I forgot T there uh, let's see if that's right oh and I shouldn't write int that's right shouldn't be copying and pasting it's better if you just write it I guess all right, there we're out of errors. And this one I will call the possibilities grid. So this grid contains the possibilities at, uh, for each square.
square. Um, and it makes sense that all of these are declared within the main. And uh, we will leave that there for now. Um, the next thing I want to do is create something that can render or display uh, this grid intelligibly. Um, just as we wrote hello uh, words equals 20 and so on, we want to be able to uh, express this grid in a visual format such as uh, this grid above is. And so the way we will do that is we'll create a method that will do that and we'll call it uh, public stat public static void print and we will put in there uh, system dot out dot uh, print line brackets and end and if you don't put anything in those brackets as we aren't it will create a blank uh, line and the purpose for that is that we can print out the original grid and then print out the new grid and it'll start off by putting in a line in between those two uh, that's the only purpose for that and now we'll create a for loop and hopefully you're familiar with for loops uh, the way you uh, write a for loop in Java you do for uh, we'll initiate a variable i equals zero semicolon as long as i is less than nine uh, execute the code and then do i uh, and you would be familiar maybe with plus equals one in and then uh, have curly brackets um, there's a because plus equals one or minus equals one is so common um, Java has created a neat notation for that and it's i plus plus and that adds one and then you would have the opposite I minus minus and there's also putting the minuses and pluses before the I and that does all different stuff anyway it gets really complicated but what we want is I plus plus and within that we will create another for loop now if you were to copy this first for loop inside the second one uh, you would notice an error and that's because I's already been declared so we're going to jump to the next letter. Uh, you could do a word if you wanted, but we'll just jump to I is standard. That's why we don't start with A. It's just uh, a convention of programming languages in general. And so I start uh, as J. And, and you have to watch these numbers. This is I equals 0, smaller than 9. Do you pick smaller or equals to 9? No, that would do go through 10 times. And you uh, you'll get a sense of that the more you program and I'm hopefully uh, some of you have already a basic idea of how that works and so basically what this is going to do is go for each uh, digit of I from 0 to 9 and within that for each digit 0 to 9 of J I want to print something out and that will so that's basically is a way we can go through each one of these uh, of these data points and I will type in system dot out dot print and what we're gonna print will be we'll print the grid um, what we're currently working on uh, it would be right now grid and you have to specify the two square brackets and the first spot is I and the spec second spot is J and what this will basically do uh, in the end is it will go through each row by row and it'll print out that letter of each uh, each digit and 
right now you see that grid is underlined. It doesn't know what grid is. And there's a very simple reason for that. Uh, the grid that we have named up here is only known within the main method. Uh, outside that method, this variable is unknown. And that way, an outside variable can, cre called, can create a grid that's maybe different, and they're kept separate. And it might seem confusing, but it becomes very useful later on. And so what we need to do is uh, pass on this grid to the next, um, yeah, we'll pass on this grid to uh, the print. And the way you would do that would be, we'll call it an integer. It's a two-dimensional array integer and grid. That means that in order to, uh, we'll call print in the main. So it will create all these grids, and then it will call out print. Now, if you just leave these brackets blank, it's uh, going to complain at you. What you have to do is type in grid. Or you could put in pgrid or any, uh, any grid uh, like that. pgrid it happens to be a string, but you could put in, uh, let's see, uh, user grid. Uh, that works. Uh, but whatever this is, this function is sent. Uh, the grid, as this uh, procedure knows it, is sent to the print. And this, in the brackets of this print, it is received entitled grid. We could entitle it grid A, but I find it very confusing to title them differently. Just keep the names consistent as much as possible. So send grid and receive a grid. And then uh, it will go through printing. If we run this as is, this is what you will get a huge line of zeros as it went row by row printing out zeros. This was not quite what we were wanting. We were wanting more of a 9 by 9 uh, sort of look. And so what we're going to do is after it's printed out all 9 of a specific row, we're going to add, let's copy the system.out.println, we're going to start a new line. And now when I run it, you will see it prints this line of 9. That would be this whole for loop. It starts a new line, or finishes that line. That's what print line would do, because the uh, cursor is roughly right here. Print line, it jumps the cursor to here, and does another line, jumps the cursor to here, does another line, and so on. And that is how you would uh, get a visual rendition of a Sudoku. Um, so we haven't got very far, um, and hopefully uh, it's not discouraging to go this far. Perhaps I'm going a little too quick. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, but uh, this is uh, the first tutorial. There's no real beginning or end. I'll just uh, end in a hopefully reasonable amount of time and at a, a place where we have uh, a completed a certain uh, task or procedure. So... I hope to see you on uh, tutorial number two for solving or for creating a Sudoku solver.